Student at the Game podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Aquaman. Aquaman's role in the Justice League. Um, Not knocking his role in there because here's the thing. Aquaman, he was the perfect team player. The perfect team player. You know what? who Aquaman reminded me of? He reminds me of um, Chris Bosh and Kevin Love. All right. For those of you who are unfamiliar with who Chris Bosh and Kevin Love is, allow me to school you on. All right, so Chris Bosh played for the Toronto Raptors for about six, about six years, okay, six seven years, and he, he was an All Star. He was an All Star in like you know in like at least five out of the seven of, the, of those seasons, and he averaged about twenty two points, eleven rebounds a game, about two blocks a game, okay. Kevin Love. Same thing. Played for the Minnesota Timberwolves, okay, for about five, about six years. Average put up 22, 12, 13 rebounds a game, okay? Both players are superstars on their team, okay? Their game, the strengths of their game relies in the paint, okay? They could shoot the three, but they're not going to camp out there on the three-point line because that's not their biggest strength their biggest strength is getting the ball down low in the post um on the low block um also it receiving the ball at the elbow knocking down that elbow jumper okay and crashing the boards okay all right that's their specialty now chris bosh he was a much better defender than kevin love kevin love is more of a more of a team defender a help defender but chris bosh he can be a help defender um he can guard the paint he can um guard the basket block shots very good shot blocker and he can go he's six foot ten power forward slash center he can guard most big man most bigs one-on-one okay now when those guys love and bosch when they each had their stint where they played alongside lebron james guess what they guess what they were delegated to they were converted into a stretch four. What a stretch four is, okay, four represents power forward, okay? That's the four in basketball as far as position-wise. So what we mean by stretch four means, that means you pretty much just camp out on the three-point line. You, you're six foot ten, seven feet tall, You no matter, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I know you can play in the post. Guess what? This is LeBron James' offense. You are going to be a stretch four, all right? Oh, but coach, I can make a lot of jumpers from the elbow. You are going to be a stretch four. How I'm going to hit the boards? You're going to have you, you, the amount of rebounds you're going to get are not going to be as much as you used to be used to get. Okay, because you're going to be a stretch four. We just need for you to catch and shoot, catch and shoot. All right. Now you take Aquaman. Where is Aquaman's strength? In the water. In the water. Can he fight on land? Yeah. He, he's pretty good. He's pretty good on land, but he's a beast in the water. All right. And majority of the movie for even for um, Josh Whedon's version and Zack Snyder's version, I felt like Aquaman got the short end of the stick. All right. I didn't. I can't. I mean, Aquaman didn't. He, he, I mean, he contributed. But he did not have any too many wow moments. It's a four hour long movie. Now that's one thing in the just in the just in the Justice League version by Josh Whedon. That that one was cut from a four hour movie to like a, a little bit under two hours. So okay, so it makes you think, okay, well, when the Snyder Cut comes out, hopefully we'll see more wow moments from Aquaman, okay? Because it's gonna be four hours long. I didn't, I didn't see any, I can't remember any wild moment from Aquaman, you know, outside of when they showed Darkseid, um, did his gamma rays on him, okay, and killed him in that hypothetical nightmare scenario, and I'm like, wow, I'm like, oh man, that's, (sighs) you know, and, and, and the thing about it is, like, Prior to Jason Momoa playing, starring as Aquaman, you know, Aquaman, I mean, Aquaman was the butt of all Justice League jokes, okay? 
even in some of the the, the the Justice League shows, the animated shows, they made fun of Aquaman. You know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, they'll be like, okay, we've got to go. Oh, oh, sound of, oh, the alarm went off. We got to go save somebody and stuff. And then Aquaman was like, oh, I'm coming. And Batman said, nah, player, we don't need you. You know, it, there's no water. It's on land, you know. Or when they show Aquaman riding on the dolphins. That was just so cute. That was so cute, right? But um, Jason Momoa made Aquaman great again. You know, he made, made it cool. As a matter of fact, like I said before, they didn't cast Jason Momoa, Jason Momoa to, hey, man, act like Aquaman, be Aquaman. No, they, they took the name Aquaman and put it on Jason Momoa and say, Jason Momoa, you do your thing. And, man, it wasn't, I mean, I, okay, he did have that moment with Steppenwolf where he stabbed him and then he threw Steppenwolf up and Wonder Woman went and chopped his head off. But still, man, you know, I, I wish I could have saw more wild moments from Aquaman. But I get it. Hey, he's the stretch four of the Justice League. But I wish they could have did a scene where they was in the water where Aquaman had to, where the other Justice League members had to depend solely on Aquaman, all right? I get it, I get it. The scene where they was in the tunnel with the Gotham Harbor and the water came through, Stephen Wolf made the water come through and he stopped the water and stuff. I get it, but that that wasn't wow. Not, not, not for the Jason Momoa version of Aquaman. That wasn't wow, okay? It wasn't, all right? But... That, but hey, man, he he didn't complain. He sacrificed for the team, you know. After he had had that fight with Steppenwolf, you know, under the water and stuff, and Mira gave him that pep talk that said, "Hey, man, if your mama was here, your mama would be in charge. It would be her responsibility to go chase him on land." And so he went ahead and did it and stuff, you know, doing his obligation, his duty. But um, man, I, I just wish I could have saw more wild moments from him. And if it remind, and like I say, it reminds me of. Chris Bosh and Kevin Love playing alongside LeBron James, where we didn't get to see those guys utilize their powers, their God-given talents as much, okay? They pretty much became a third or fourth option on that team. They have to, you know, they have to stand out at the three-point line. And and those two guys being out on the three-point line, that's the equivalent of Aquaman being on land, okay? Not saying he can't fight on land, but... He's not as strong, you know, his strength is what is being in the water, you know, and the world is supposedly, you know, supposedly there's more water than land. So I don't know. I, I wish Aquaman could have. Well, I guess he can't manipulate water and stuff like that. I don't know what all his powers are. You know, sometimes they say he can. Sometimes they say he can talk to fish. Sometimes they say he cannot. So it depends on which iteration that we're getting. But. You tell me what you think. Like, if you're familiar with with basketball and stuff like that and watching the NBA basketball, Kevin Love and Chris Bosh, did Aquaman appear to be Chris Bosh-like or Kevin Love-like to you? And can you think of any other wow moments in that movie that you can think of from Aquaman? And listen, don't mix it up with the Aquaman solo movie. He had plenty of wow moments in that. But I'm like, in this movie, come on, man. We got to get some wow moments from Aquaman. And we didn't. All right? Let me know what you think. Student at the Game Podcast. Comment below. And guess what? Hit that like button and that subscribe button. Peace.